On this final episode of Hitasa this season, we feature the prolific works of abstract painter Wakisha Wazome, as well as insights on pottery from the vastly experienced instructor Arthur Okech. Whenever you want to make a pot or anything on the wheel, you have to start with making a cylinder. You have to be extra careful when you're holding your clay. Abstract art has its origins in the 19th century, a period that showed elaborately represented art produced by a number of painters who examined the mechanism of light and visual perception. The history of abstract art is the history of artists' quest for freedom. What that means today is that artists are free to express themselves in whatever manner they choose, exploring whatever method compels them. The beauty of today's open-ended style is that an artist can use whatever style, medium or method that works best for the realization of an idea. We link up with Wakisha Wazome at the Karen village to get a glimpse into her journey working with acrylic paints to create her masterpieces of work. I think my love for art has just always been there, but I really channeled it maybe like in young adulthood. So maybe around 2017 is when I started doing it for fun mostly just in my room following YouTube tutorials and then I saw that the pieces I was creating were really good so I started doing it for myself afterwards 2019 continuously. Yeah. As is the struggle for many growing up, convincing her parents to allow her to pursue art has not been easy. It was encouraged but also you know African parents they want you to push you towards careers and everything. But for me, I've always been a creative person and really inspired by art. So even now, I'm still trying to convince them because <laughs> they still don't see like solid monetary benefits every month as opposed to what you'd be earning in a job, a salary. So it's still a journey to convince them. Wakisha's inspiration just goes to show her desire to express herself to provoke critical conversations in the society. Fine art is very specific, you have to sketch and I've never been like an artist, I've never been good at drawing and sketching real life. So for me mostly colours inspire me and patterns. My themes are usually individuality and femininity, so I focus on boosting people's self-esteem because in my art, I try and like use affirmations. Um, sometimes I start with a pattern, I am enough, and then go following that pattern across the canvas. And just uh, using bright colors also to evoke that curiosity. And um, for femininity, I want like women to feel inspired by my art feel like also all bodies what matter and not like these stereotypical things you see online. Uh, so I try to use a lot of that in my artwork, my painting. Now we get into her creative space to have a better understanding of the thought process behind her works. She starts off with priming her canvas. Once she is done priming and the canvas is out to dry, Wakisha now sketches what she intends to paint on the canvas. It's going to focus on, on lips. It's going to be bright colors, of course, in the background. Then I just kind of like draw the various lips that I'm going to sketch onto the canvas. For this one, it will be like mostly big lips or just lips of different sizes. Mostly big because most like women or people I'd say, but mostly women, I don't think it's a problem with men. They're usually like made fun of for having big lips. Or it's like a feature that some people want, other people don't want for various reasons. So the people with the, like the big lips in frame are going to have like really 
bold colors, bright colors, because people are like they're like showing they're confident with how they look. So there are also going to be eyes and the eyes are going to be, be like looking at the lips like or how, how do you get so confident or how are you like so comfortable with being so bold like I wish I had that confidence. The colors I use are very really like specific colors. Either either warm or cool colors. So like warm, yellow, orange, red, red orange, cool, blue, blue green, green, violet. I I think blue is one of my favorites, like uh, lighter shades of blue because they are really calm and associated with relaxation. So that's what I'm trying to, like, to achieve also in my painting. As the piece comes to life, we find out the place for female artists in the industry from Wakisha's perspective. I've like struggled finding like other female artists also you kind of want somebody to relate to, to talk to about like the challenges. So for me, it's been hard. I know a few, but I have also not like met them personally so that we can like even see if we have that chemistry to get along and everything. But um, yeah, it is challenging to find like another female artist to kind of relate to. As Wakisha reflects on her journey thus far, the reception and feedback of her pieces comes with mixed reactions, considering abstract is not easily understood. It's usually very surprising when someone says that it looks good because I was struggling a lot also with being confident in my paintings. So also self-esteem is a very important and personal theme to me. So when somebody is happy about it and curious to buy it, it's really exciting and you kind of really feel fulfilled. I usually like somebody to tell me what they think about the painting itself. And then now I can kind of tell them what I was going for. And then now once I explain is when they feel like, oh, okay, I, I kind of see that. And I also like hearing their perspective because it's very, people interpret it very differently. Pricing art pieces is one of those things that many artists struggle with as there is always an underlying risk of underpricing. I feel like I'm starting out. So you have also to have that confidence in your work. Because now you think, ah, because I'm starting out, maybe it's not as expert enough like Jimmy's, so maybe should I charge lower? But I think at the end of the day, you have to calculate like how much your materials are worth, also how much time you put into your work. Because there are some that will take one hour, two hours a day, five days. So you really like need to base it off of that. And also like maybe the value or what went into it also, I think. Like the message you, you are trying to evoke. Growth for her takes on a new meaning as she battles making money from her craft and working towards exhibiting her work more. I try not to focus on the money because I, I try and focus on the feeling of creating and what satisfaction it gives me as opposed to money because if I focus on how much will this sell, it's very depressing because you don't sell pieces every day 
or even every month so you kind of have to focus on what it makes like you feel and also improving your style i think if you just focus on growing it's a quicker way to get to money than focusing on money i definitely want to exhibit because every artist's uh, exhibitions are a way of opening yourself up to the market seeing if even people are curious about your pieces also hearing feedback from other artists i think it's very important to work towards an exhibition so it's one of my biggest and immediate goals I think one thing that I didn't do when I started early on is practice enough because I was painting maybe once in every three months or not consistently every day. I'd say maybe learn something every day even if you don't uh, get to your canvas or touch your paint every day, at least maybe sketch or watch a documentary or just take an online class, just teach yourself something new every day. Someone to look up to and find inspiration from is always a huge motivation in the art industry. For Wakisha, a few big names stand out. I think internationally is John michel Basquiat. Uh, just his story about the way he started with graffiti and then now being recognized as a painter on canvas and also all the challenges he met at the time. People also not believing in him, in his work, is also something that I've experienced. And um, for me, I feel like he was underrated and I also feel underrated. So I look up to him in so many ways. And locally, being at Karen Village and just experiencing all the different artists, there's um, Jimmy Kitheka and there's Patrick Mukabi and um, Solo Sana, just like seeing people and seeing how much love and art, um, how much love and work they put into their pieces, it's inspiring because it pushes you to not be, not like give up on yourself, like just keep going every day. Wakisha has also taken up other ventures from time to time, with her love for art constantly superseding the rest. I think my challenge is that you're looking for a salary you have like needs to meet so you kind of deviate from art and focus on other things because you've also been pushed towards those things so it's been challenging trying to tell myself my paintings are good enough or that they'll even be like viable by some people so um yeah it's been hard so but when I paint is when I feel most fulfilled. So I figured why not do that thing that makes me happy instead of focusing on other things which are really tedious and they take so much time to make, to like get like a tangible result. While art, you can just paint and feel happy and hold on to that happiness and just, you know, it's very fulfilling. The lips and eyes are done. We get insight from Wakisha on some of her other finished pieces. It's representing somebody who's discovering themselves or like who's on that journey to discover themselves. So there are different faces, some are complete, some are looking like three eyes. For example, this one was on that journey almost complete but hasn't quite finished, completed down here. This one is kind of like halfway. Um, there are some who are confused, um, others who are still looking, comp trying to complete like the circle, but aren't quite there. This one was uh, based on the self-esteem, self-esteem like affirmation, I am enough. So the words are there, I am enough but like it's these are all letters like repeating themselves across the canvas so it's a confusing journey to like really believe in yourself to actualize that belief in yourself i am enough so that's what it's representing it's jumbled up this one is just um about the different like feminine 
bodies out there. Um, some they are different. There's like big busted women, small busted. There's one who's had a is it called a mastectomy? Like yeah, uh, cancerous like breast removed. So and then them they're like the largest figure there to represent like the boldness you know that they should feel and also that it doesn't make them like less of a female or, or like less feminine to like lose one part of themselves. Art is gaining momentum in the Kenyan industry with improved public reception but the question remains whether it is defined an industry strong to enable artists earn a living. I think that the Kenyans are very like appreciative towards art and also social media is a very like important tool. It's really opened up people to see more of art and to even discover new artists because I've discovered a lot of artists online. Not every artist has a studio. Most work from home, most just exhibit on Instagram. So I think that if you do your research enough, you can definitely find art. Um, even if you don't go to exhibitions and whatever. And also at exhibitions, seeing all those people curious about the artist pieces, and also they'll keep going, there'll be more people coming other days to the exhibition to attend. I think it's encouraging and that there's definitely room for every artist. Here's a look at what's to come after the break. Whenever you want to make a pot or anything on the wheel, you have to start with making a cylinder. This week on Crosstalk. The environment in the country is so different. We don't tie the ability to work with the ability to run or with the ability to win elections. Is what we are having right now really democracy? What would you consider to be a free, fair, election in Kenya. Free and fair to who? As it is right now, is it even fair to the politicians? That's this Sunday at 8 p.m. Pottery is one of the oldest human inventions originating before the Neolithic period with ceramic objects like the Gravitian culture Venus of Dolni Vestonisi figurine discovered in the Czech Republic dating back to the times before Christ. For a hands-on glimpse on pottery today, we link up with pottery instructor at the Nairobi Art Center, Arthur Okech. He will be taking us through his creative process of making some items from clay, but first off, harvesting the clay. My clay, I normally get it from Nyeri, Mkureini, where I harvest the clay there, bring it here, because since we don't have enough uh, space to store the clay, I decided, or we decided at Lake Art Center, we decided to store our raw clay here in the flower bed area. It can't rot. The longer it, it stays, the gooder it is, or the better it is. Yeah, I'll take, I'll take my spade, then with my bucket, fill the bucket with clay. So from this storage area, I'll take my clay. After taking my clay, I'll take it to a drum filled with water. Then from there, I'll stir it. After stirring it, I'll sieve it to remove the pebbles or the roots or the grass to let it go under a mesh sieve. Then from there, I let it settle down, sieve on water, then take the clay, pour it in a trough. By the time I'm doing this thing, I'm smashing clay into very finer particles. Because without doing this, it won't pass on, on this sieve. A rather rigorous process that takes quite some time, Arthur picks a piece of work within the studio. This is the clay that we harvested from there, from, from the trough. 
so I need to remove the air pockets or the air bubbles from it. By doing that, I'll wedge it or knead it in a simple term for everybody to understand. I'll knead it just like doing the chapati thing. So I'll take it, put it on my board here, squeeze it. By the time I'm squeezing this, I'm removing the air pockets out from it. When I'm wedging clay like this, I should take like two to three minutes to make it properly weighed. So the type of wedging I'm doing, it's a spiral wedging. When you look it, when you look at it carefully, it looks like a shell. So when you see these bumps here, it means that I'm folding the clay together to remove the peg, to be removing the air pockets out. Now it's, it's done. I'll make it in a cone shape, ready to go on the wheel. So after here, I'll go on my wheel, I'll take my cutting wire, cut just a small piece that I want to work on. After wedging, Arthur now moves to the wheel as he starts out with the first item, a bowl. So there's a, a funny phrase which says, you are the clay, I'm the potter. John chapter something, I don't know which chapter it is. So you won't be the clay, so this is the clay, but I'm the potter. Let's start off. When I feel my clay is too big, I'll just cut it to be precise, take what I can manage. Just take my cutting wire. Now, Arthur moves to a rather complex item, a vase. Hit it harder, dip my hands, then I start creation. By the time I'm pulling this clay up and down, I'm also removing the air pockets. Whenever you want to make a pot or anything on the wheel, you have to start with making a cylinder because cylinder is mother of everything.
as the process seems simpler to us, others keen to mention that it is not as simple as it seems, as he now works on a double-bellied vase. It might appear easy and also it depends with the experience that you have. You can come here for two years or one year, but if you don't have interest, you won't make it. Also a plate, making a plate not easy. As we conclude, Arthur shares insight on pottery as perceived by the younger generation. Younger generation, they love pottery because they love being messy when they are at home. From there, the parents normally say, don't play with clay, don't be messy. When they come here, they are free to be messy and to play with clay. So they feel that clay and they get it right. So they say, okay, this is the right position they want. Because if they go back home, they won't play with mud, clay, water. So here it's the everything for them. This one is finished now. I'll just cut it. If you have kids who'd be interested in getting messy working with clay, you can visit the Nairobi Art Center. This marks the end of another exciting season of Hitasa. We'd like to appreciate you for watching this program. To our partners, thank you very much for your generous support that makes these programs possible. Remember to share your thoughts, questions and comments on the SMS line 20316 or WhatsApp 0786 316 316.